Let's look at limits of composite functions. This is when one function is interacting with a different function, or sometimes it interacts with itself in some weird wonky way. These problems usually you are provided two different graphs or graphs of all the functions. Sometimes they are uh, asked with equations, but typically they look like this. So let's look at this problem. And we have to look at these very, very, very meticulously. And it should not surprise you when I'm doing the limit of g of f of x, we will start on the inside. We're going to start with that f of x. And I'm actually going to come over here and I'm going to say, um, just temporarily, I'm going to think, let's let u equal f of x. We're going to do a little substitution thing here. And I'm going to come over here and I'm going to think about that f of x separately. So what is the limit as x approaches negative 2 of f of x? Now, that question by itself is actually pretty easy. It's not too bad. If we go to the f of x here, negative 2 from left and right, you see they are both approaching 3. However, in a problem like this, where I'm going to use this answer and somehow substitute it into the function g, I need to actually look at this from both sides very carefully, very carefully. And as we look at f of x, let's look at the left side. And we are approaching 3. We're coming up here on the left side, and we are approaching that removable discontinuity at 3. However, it is very important whether we are coming from above or from below. And in this case, we are coming from below. And if you think about the values of this function, as we approach that value of 3, I'm starting here. If I go really far away, I'm starting at, neg uh, starting at 2. Then as I move closer to an x-coordinate of negative 2, I now have a value of like 2.1. Now I'm up to 2.5. My y-coordinate is now 2.9. And you'll notice we are approaching 3, but we're coming from the left side. We have values that are on the left of 3. 2.9, 2.8, 2.7, all of those are left of 3. And it's from the left because the graph is coming from below. Now I'm going to do the same thing as we approach negative 2 from the right side. Again, we're approaching 3, but from the right side, again, we're looking, coming from below. So I'm looking at values like 2, 2.5. I'm coming towards 3 from values on the left side, and that's because the graph is approaching 3 from below. Okay. So what I just figured out is f of x is actually approaching 3 from the left side. So I'm going to rewrite my limit, keeping in mind that a long time ago, and you may be wondering why through this u equals f of x, I'm going to take advantage of that now. And I'm doing this just to appease the gods of math. We don't want to have any variable confusion, um, but we're going to have the limit of g of something. And in this case, we're going to replace the f of x with that u. And we just found out that f is approaching 3 from the left. So we're going to do the limit as u approaches 3 from the left because that was the answer to the interior part of g. Now I realize this says g of x. I have changed this to g of u. That doesn't matter. It's still the same function. So we're still talking about g. And as g approaches 3 from the left side, you will see that we are coming in at a value of 1. And there is the answer to this problem. So you have to analyze this very meticulously, considering whether you are coming from above or from below, because that influences the direction for the second layer of the limit. So let's look at number two, same type question. And I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to start on the inside and I'm going to say, you know what, let's just let u equal g of x. And so if I do that, I'm going to come over here and I'm going to think, well, let's analyze that g function. Let's do zero from the left of g and let's do zero from the right of g and when i do that let's look up here at g here's zero from the left side i'm coming towards a y coordinate of zero but you'll notice that this graph from the left is above zero we're coming from above so that's going to be zero from the right because we're coming from above okay and then zero from the right again same thing we're coming towards zero from the right side and we're coming from above. So we're approaching zero from higher values. So zero from the right again, because that's from above. And so now I'm going to go back to my original problem and let's rewrite the limit. Let's reanalyze this limit as X approaches. Whoops, not X. The limit. And I'm going to look at my function F. And we're going to substitute out the G and call that U. And we're going to do the limit as u 
approaches zero from the right because we figured out that G is approaching zero from the right. So let's go to my function F. Here's F and I wanna see what's happening as we get to zero from the right. Whoops, this is the right side. So we're coming from the right towards zero. We're up there at a value of two and here we can stop. We don't have to worry about two from below because that's our final answer. You only have to worry about the above or below if you're working uh, a beginning part that will be used later on within the same problem. So let's look at three and let's see how this goes. Here we have G and then G again. So F is not even come into play. And so let's start with that interior part. We're gonna say, let's let U equal G of X. So that's kind of on the back burner for now. Let's figure out what the limit as X approaches negative two from the left of G of X is. So I'm gonna unpack that inside. So here's G, here's negative two. If I come to negative two from the left, you'll notice that I am approaching negative two. So the answer is negative two. However, I'm coming from above. As I get close to the negative two on the X coordinate from the left, I'm coming towards negative two on the Y coordinate from above. So that's gonna be negative two from the right. And then I'm gonna rewrite my limit over here. Limit, it'll be G of, and now I'm going to replace the G of X on the inside with U because a long time ago I did say, let's let U equal G of X. And I'm interested in when that is approaching negative two from the right. Now back to G and we're even back to negative two, but this time we're coming from the right side. Right side is going up towards four. And so there is your answer. All right, looking at this problem, we have F interacting with itself. So I'm gonna let U be the inside piece, F of X. And if u is f of x, I'm going to come over here and I'm gonna consider that inside part, limit as x approaches two of f of x. And if we look at f of x, as we approach two, we are looking at both sides and we are approaching two. So two from the left and two from the right, they do meet at two, but you'll notice this time, one is coming from above, one is coming from below. So we're coming from both the left and the right side. We're coming from both above and below. That's actually the right and the left. We're coming from both sides. So I'm gonna make a note that as X approaches two or F of X and we're equal to two, and I'm just gonna make a note that that's from both sides. So this is not gonna be reduced to a one-sided limit. This one, we are approaching two from both above and below. So when I reset my limit over here, I'm gonna have the limit of F of something, and I'm going to replace the interior F with a U because I'll let U equal F of X earlier, and we're gonna do the limit as U approaches two. I'm sorry, that's negative two. This is approaching negative two, not positive two. Ooh, glad I caught that. So I'm sorry, so back to this really quick. That was a, a, a mental lapse on my part. We're approaching negative two here. The value is negative two from both sides. So we're approaching negative two from both sides, and so I'm gonna come back and look at F and negative two from both sides, both sides are approaching three, and so the answer is three. We said look at both sides instead of only one side. Okay. Uh, let's look at this one, so we have G. Now here, I have swapped out, instead of putting an F of X or a G of X on the inside, I've given you an actual equation, and so when I wanna look at this one, I'm going to need to consider whether I'm coming from above or below, and it's really easier to sketch this graph, and this is a very easy one to graph. So I'm gonna come over here and I'm gonna sketch negative x squared plus two really quickly. You should know negative x squared is a parabola opening down, shift, and this will be shifted up two units. So I'm gonna go up one, up two, and here's my parabola. So there's my interior. So I'm gonna come over here, and I'm gonna do the exact same thing I've been doing. I'm gonna say, let's let u equal, I'm writing in dots, let's let u equal the negative x squared plus two. So I'm gonna analyze the limit as x approaches zero of negative x squared plus two. And if you look at that, we have to look at both sides, the left side and the right side are going up there towards that vertex, which has a y value of two. And this time you'll notice both sides are below. We're coming both sides from underneath that value of two. So this is gonna be two from the left because we are coming from below on both sides. Whoa, that was a weird E. So we're coming from below on both sides. So when I reset my limit, I'm gonna come back over here. It's a limit 
as something approaches something of g of u i'm going to replace the interior with u and we just found out that that interior will approach two from the left so it's u approaches two from the left and so let's go back over to g so here's g here's two and i'm concerned about two from the left two from the left is going up towards four and this problem Okay, this one will work. For some reason, I was, did I skip one earlier? Yeah, I went from six to eight. Okay, I knew there was one that didn't work and I deleted it. Okay, so this one, same thing, only we have three layers. We have three layers here. So let's start on the inside. We just have to take our time and do this methodically. Let's start on the inside. I'm going to let u equal f of x. And let's see what happens to that very interior part as x approaches negative three of f of x. Okay, so here's my function f. Here's negative three right here. And you'll notice that left and right sides are coming towards a value of two and left and right sides are above the value of two. So we're coming at two from above. So I'm gonna reset my limit. I now have the limit of, and I haven't touched G of F of, and that interior, I'm gonna replace with a U and we just found out that that is approaching two from the right. So we're gonna do U approaches two from the right and we have to do another interior. So I'm going to take this inside piece. I can't say U equals because U has already been used. Let's go with V. V is gonna equal F of U. And so let's figure out what happens to that inside F limit as X approaches and I'm interested in two from the right of f of x. I guess I should say u because it's, I did say v is f of u, so let's fix that. Okay, so two from the right of f. So here's two from the right is approaching a value of negative two. And on the right side, we are below that. So it's negative two from the left. So now I'll reset my limit one more time. Limit, this is g of, and I replace f of u, I, I called f of u v, so f of u is going to be v, and we want the limit as that inside is approaching, we found out this is approaching negative 2 from the left, negative 2 from the left, and finally we can wrap this up, here's my g function, negative 2 from the left is going towards a value of negative 2. Good, good. And then one last problem. One last problem, and this is going to be the easiest to mess up because it's not F inside G or G inside F or something like that. These are separated, it's F of X plus G of X. So when you look at this on the surface, you may be thinking, well, F of X, as I approach one, F doesn't exist. G, as we approach one, also does not exist. Well, does not exist plus does not exist, should be does not exist. But unfortunately, it's not that easy. It's not that easy. We need to, because there are two functions interacting with each other, we really need to consider both the left and the right hand sides. So I'm going to look at this. Let's do limit as x approaches one from the left of f of x plus g of x. And let's look at this left hand side. So f one from the left is coming in at negative two. And if you want to be really picky, you could say negative two from the left side. In this case, it's not gonna matter if we're coming from above or below because we're not substituting one function into the other. Um, there's no multiplication. Addition is very nice and clean where we can look at them separately. Um, and as a matter of fact, I'm just going to ignore the from the left. If it's a composition, if F is inside G, or even if you're multiplying them, sometimes the left and right may come into play, but in this case, um, it doesn't. So negative two for F plus, let's look at G. As we approach one from the left, G is approaching one, negative two plus one is negative one. Let's look at this same function, F plus G, as we approach one from the right. And one from the right, okay, let's go to F. Here's one from the right side. We are coming in at two plus, and G from the right side is coming in to negative three. Two plus negative three is negative one. 
And if you look at those two answers, we found out that the left side and the right side of one ultimately give you the same answer. Therefore, the limit as x approaches one of f plus g will equal negative one as well. So on the surface, it looked like it'd be a bunch of DNEs, does not exist. However, when you do analyze left and right more intentionally, you will realize that they are the same and the answer is negative one. And that is the last problem. Hope that helps you out.